Right, in this video, we are going to write a DAG that uses Kubernetes pod operator that will clarify your understanding about what Kubernetes pod operator is and how it's used in Airflow. But you may watch the first part of the tutorial link at the top right corner if you don't know or are unclear about the core terminologies like Kubernetes pods, Airflow Kubernetes pod operators, Airflow Kubernetes executors, the difference between executors and operators and difference between Kubernetes executor and Kubernetes pod operator, then feel free to watch the first part first. But if not, let's continue and proceed with this part. I have written down this simple Python app that we are going to use in Kubernetes pod operator. And this app is like doing nothing. It's just like it has some dummy functions ingest data and load data. So it contains a Docker file that is going to uh, build a Docker image out of this code. And let's let's run this file. And uh, I have some pre-built commands in there. So we say Docker build. We tag it as example app test. Uh, I'm just gonna run this app. So it has like two functions in here. So we say Docker run. We will run this code in ingest mode. So it's just printing some lines saying that I'm ingesting something. And once it's done, it says data ingestion finished. Similarly, I have another function called load data that does exactly the same, but just saying like I'm done loading the data. Pretty much simple Python app, nothing fancy in here. Remember that I'm using this code to demonstrate the functionality of Kubernetes pod operator. You can use your own Docker image written in any of your favorite programming language. This is just for testing and demonstration purpose. I'm not going to the details of how exactly we are going to spin up an Airflow in Kubernetes cluster using Kubernetes Executor because I have done exactly that in my previous video. If you have missed it, do watch that. But just a quick recap on the things that you need to know to in order to continue working on the same repository and adding new DAG with Kubernetes pod operator is that in this repository, we have three bits, a uh, kind cluster that is going to help you set up a multi-node Kubernetes cluster in your local machine. And then we have an Airflow DAG directory where we have a Docker file and list of tags that we want in our Airflow. Right now, this is an empty file, which we are going to populate shortly. And the other bit is the helm chart that defines the YAML configurations in order to be deployed in Kubernetes to run Airflow. Main bits are these deployments, which include scheduler, web server, and MySQL. Then you have some configurations, Airflow configs, then role-based success control in order to allow Airflow to dynamically spin up the pods using Kubernetes executor. And then we have secrets and some volumes to store the logs. So let us go ahead and spin up a two node Kubernetes cluster on a local machine. So this is the bash script that is going to be used. So we go to kind cluster directory and we simply run this script. It is going to uh, spin up a local Docker registry for us as well, in which we are going to upload the Docker images that are going to be picked up from pods running inside the Kubernetes cluster. Alongside, we can also check uh, what Docker containers have been spinned up so far. Uh, it has spinned up uh, two worker nodes and one registry. That's good. So I think it's like joining all these uh, containers together in order to form a Kubernetes cluster. And looks like everything is up and running now. So we should be good to go. You can check and verify your Kubernetes cluster is up and running. Uh, so I use this K9S CLI tool, which is uh, really handy. Uh, yep, looks good. So we have required namespaces. And in fact, let's uh, create a namespace called Airflow. Right. So yep, we have a new namespace Airflow. Currently, it's empty. So before deploying, let us write our new DAG and then we can bake it in a Docker file and then we can deploy it in our Kubernetes cluster. So uh, go to your Airflow DAGs in the DAG directory. Uh, Q pod operator DAG. First of all, import the important bits that are required. Then we define the default args needed for the DAG to execute. Note that you have to mention the exact same namespace where your Airflow is running. So in our case, it's Airflow. 
then we are going to define our DAG as hello cube pod operator and then we can define the task. So the first one will be in the ingest data, which is an instance of Kubernetes pod operator. The image that it will use is following. So this is the app that I just showed you right now. So we are going to bake it inside the Docker image and push it in the local Docker registry uh, before running this tag. So, but you can also refer this to wherever your image is being hosted, either in ACR, AWS, or Google image registry or Docker hub. And the arguments it needs is the first one is this ingest data uh, and then a bunch of other configurations that you can add in there like retries, retry delays, etc. Now you can define like a bunch of more tasks in here uh, that can use several other operators. But in our case, we are going to use both of them as community spot operator. And the image can be exactly the same. And then finally, we can uh, join these tasks with the dependencies as like, we're going to ingest the data first. And as soon as that's done, we are going to load it into the warehouse. So ingest data and then load data. With that, we are like pretty much done. Uh, of course, you can add a bunch of more things in here. For example, as I showed you in my earlier slides that you can uh, pass in like variables from environment variables, as well as from the config maps. So in your DAG definition, you can define an environment variable as using the Kubernetes resources. And I think for that, you have to import uh, and install uh, Kubernetes, K8S and models. And then finally, you can pass this as environment vars, V-A-R-S. You can also get hold of the config maps which are deployed in your Kubernetes cluster as following. We are going to create this config maps before uh, deploying Airflow, so don't worry. Um, so once you have defined the config maps, you can say env from config maps. Our DAG definition is pretty much complete. Now let us first make sure that this image is built and it's uploaded in our local Docker registry. So for that, I'm going to uh, go to our example app that we were looking earlier, this one. We already built this app with the name example app test. Uh, so what we need to do is we can just tag it differently so that it's referring to our local doc registry, uh, which would be something like this. You can say, it. I think it's test one. Yeah, test one. So local host, I, in fact, I can copy this. All right. Now, once it's tagged, we can just say docker push. It's being pushed into our local docker registry now. It's done. So, yep, that, so this image is now ready. Now, before uh, deploying our Airflow, let us make sure that these config maps exist in our Helm chart. So if you go to Helm charts, templates, configs, uh, let us create a new config in here which would look something like this. You name it as my configs and you can add as much information as required by your business logic to be used inside that Docker image. So we use this mostly when we have to run like big giant SQL scripts. Uh, so in that case, we load these SQL scripts from the config maps. Now everything looks good. We are now, oh, in fact, we forgot to build the Airflow image. So the image that we are referring in our scheduler and web server. So that would be values, Airflow, DAG, uh, DAGs image repository. So this is this one, localhost 5001, Airflow first tag. So this is the Docker file that we need to build. Uh, Docker build tag as Airflow community spot operator test. Right, once it's built, we can uh, re-tag this image as uh, localhost 5001 Airflow KPO test. Okay, now we can push this image to our local Docker registry. So while this is happening, we have to make sure that uh, the image referred in our Helm chart values is exactly the same. So in this case, this should be Airflow KPO test. In fact, this is the tag, so this should be coming in here. Oops. Everything else looks good. So we are now in the stage to deploy Airflow in Kubernetes. So we go back to our handcharts directory. 
so this will be Helm upgrade install airflow. I think we don't have to change anything else because that's what we have hard coded in the values file anyway. The only thing we need to make sure to mention here is namespace airflow. Right, so if you go back to our airflow namespace, uh, we can see all the deployments are spinning up. It is going to take a bit of time. MySQL app seems to be running. Okay. MySQL database server has been started. So that looks good. Airflow web server is also started. It is going to close because uh, Airflow DB upgrade has not been done, which is uh, going to happen in scheduler. So this is happening right now. So while this is happening, uh, our server is still going to crash and retry a few more times. And yeah, it looks good. MySQL server and scheduler both are up. Looks good. Nice. So we can now port forward the web server in order to view the web UI. So in this case, we can say localhost 8080. Okay. Now you can go ahead in your browser and type localhost 8080 you will be prompt into the login page of uh, the Airflow. Um, so what was the password we set it up? I think it's uh, defined in YAML file somewhere. So create admin user, name is admin, password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's already saved in my browser. All right, now we can see our new DAG with Kubernetes pod operator as a task. So we can go to the draft view, you can see both of these tasks are configured as Kubernetes pod operators. So let us go ahead and run these. So enable the tag, enable auto refresh, and see what's happening in our Kubernetes. So this is the watcher pod, and this was the, oh, it's gone. That is quick. Um, yeah, so this is the worker pod for the load. This is the watcher pod and it finished and then as soon as the worker part finishes the watcher part also finishes so um if we refresh this we should see the status of both of these tags as green they have been passed successfully you can view the logs and you can see the logs of your business logic inside the image nice so all looks good so I'm gonna rerun these DAGs one more time and gonna give you a closer look on the YAML definitions of the pod that was uh, dynamically spawned by a community spot operator. And let's see what's defined in that. So we trigger the tag again and let's go ahead. This is the watcher pod and it is going to spin up a worker pod shortly. This is the one. So we press Y to get the YAML definition of this pod. So this is all that has been dynamically spinned up by Kubernetes pod operator. As you can see, it's using this container as arguments as ingest data. Uh, it's using this image and we were passing the environments as key was capital foo and the value was foo and with the bar as well. And we have also passed in the configs as part of the environment variables. That means whatever we define in this config, uh, so this key and this value and this key and this value should also be visible inside this pod as an environment variable. And similarly, you can attach uh, volumes and volume mounts with your Kubernetes pod operator. You can get some example codes from the Kubernetes pod operator official docs. Uh, as you can see, they are using volume mounts and config maps and and you can define init container as well. So everything that you can do with a pod in Kubernetes, you can do exactly that by defining a task with Kubernetes pod operator. So that should be all for this video. I hope you got a clear understanding of what Kubernetes pod operator is and what it can do for you. If you haven't subscribed already, I would request you to please do that. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. With that, I'm going to sign off and I will see you guys in the next interesting video. So till then, take care. Bye.